Okay, we are still working in Chapter 8. Um, in this video, I'm going to show you how to work with parallel arrays. So parallel arrays is a concept where you can store um, aligned data, aligned lists of data. So what I have here, let's take a look at my text file. We are going to do several things in this program. We are going to read from a text file. We are going to read the data into two parallel arrays. And we are going to do that using some functions so we can see how to pass file stream variables to functions. So if you look in this text file, um, first of all, the text file exists in my case in the same folder as my project files. So if you go take a look at your projects folder, and in there, module 8 is my project. So we go in there and go in one more into module 8. Notice my election.txt exists here. And if it is there, then you don't need to enter the path when it asks you to enter the file name. If it is not there, you must enter a full-fledged path in order for it to find your file. So this is one of the common mistakes I have students have all the time is where they don't have the file in the right folder and then it does not find it. So make sure it is in the same folder as your projects folder too deep into your projects folder. Now here's my text file. It has a name and the number of votes um, that this person got. Our goal is to read this data. This is going to be our input file. So we read the name, we read the number of votes, and we need to calculate the percentage of votes that they got. So here is a number, and we need to calculate the percentage after we calculate the total number of votes here. So let's go take a look at our program. Starting from the top, <clears throat> we have our I have included my IO stream. We need F stream because we're going to read from the file. We need string because if you notice in my text file, I have a name and I'm going to read that into a string variable. And I also need my IO manip because my first job is to read the data from the text file. And when I output it, I want this data all aligned neatly. And in order to do that, we have to use all our manipulators. Then I have some constants. We are creating arrays. Notice my text file has two lists. One is the name and one is the votes that they got. So we need to make sure that the name and the votes are aligned. So if Johnson had 5,000, we want to make sure that they match up. So if we put Johnson in the zeroth spot or in subscript zero for names, then we need to put his votes also in the zeroth position. So that is essentially the concept of parallel arrays. And there's really nothing in the system that will do it. You just have to keep track and make sure that they are aligned. So if you sort one array, for example, if you sort an array by name, then you have to make sure you move the votes when you move the person's name. When you're sorting, you must make sure that the data is aligned. Otherwise, you'd sort the name and the votes wouldn't be matched and it would be all wrong. So the concept of parallel arrays simply says keep everything parallel and aligned and you as the programmer will have to take care of it. So let's see how we do that. So we have global constants. My capacity, again, cap is for the array and max car is um, for the string if I use one. <clears throat> and I have three functions. One is an open file function. Its job is to open the file and make sure that the file open well. So if you look here, it's a void function. It's called open file. It takes a file stream variable by reference. This file stream variable must be passed by reference. It cannot be passed by value. So we have the ampersand sign in front of it. So you need the ampersand sign to tell it that you're going to pass this file stream variable by reference. The same thing with read data. So once a file is open, then we want to read the data from the file. And since we need a place to put the data that we read, we must pass our two arrays. We read a name and an integer, which is the vote. So here we go. We have file stream variable passed by reference, the names array, which is a string array, and the votes array, which is an integer array. And they both get declared in main. 
and the function returns an integer. So we'll see what it does. It essentially loads the data and it keeps count of the number of lines of data that it's reading and it returns that count. Then our third function is calculate total, which calculates the percentage. So this size that gets returned from read data gets passed to calculate total. So it goes through a for loop for that size. And again, it takes the arrays, names, and votes, and it calculates the total, and it outputs it all in that function. So then we go into main. Those are our prototypes. In main, we declare the two arrays. One is a string array called names, and the other is an integer array called votes. Then we also declare a variable called size, which we will pass to our function, and when it returns, or which we will actually which is a value that gets returned from the function read data. So let's declare our file stream variable ifstream in file. Then we pass that to our open file function. So in our open file function, we receive it as a reference parameter. We have a file name variable, a character array file name. We are going to use this to read the file name from the user. So we say char file name max car. Ask the user to enter file name. Use the cn.get syntax to read the file name and the number of characters. And otherwise, if you have a space in your file name somewhere along the line, it won't read it. Then you do in file.open and pass that variable file name to it. And you check if file did not open, then we're going to terminate. Notice my exit statement. If, I, if not in file, that means the file did not open, then we say file did not open, program terminating, and we quit. If it opens, it will simply go back to where it was called from after opening the file. So if we come back to this point, then the file was opened successfully. So then we take that file stream variable, which has now opened the file, and pass that and our two arrays to my read data function. The read data function returns an integer and that goes into size. So let's see what our read data function does. Go down to that section. Read data essentially says, okay, I'm going to initialize an integer variable called size equals zero. So that will get incremented and will get returned. We go through a while loop. Remember our while loop to make sure that we read all the data in the file. While not in file dot end of file. That means as long as we have not reached end of file, we read. That's all we're doing here. In file, notice my stream operator. We are simply using our standard extraction operator because we don't have any names. We don't have any spaces. I mean, if you look at your text file, we don't have any spaces between the names. There is a space between each data. So when we say in file extraction operator names of size, it's going to read the first name into names of zero. Then it'll stop reading when it hits the space. And then we're going to read the next data because remember, the extraction operator does not read spaces. Then it reads the next data. It does not read new line character either. So after reading one line of data, it'll stop. We increment size, go back to the for loop or the while loop. Since size gets incremented, it has gone from 0 to 1. We read the next line of data and put it in our next array element. And we keep doing this until we have reached the end of file. Once end of file reach, is reached, we return size back to where it was called from. So that is in main. We go back here. Now we take that size that we have and the two arrays, which are now filled. Remember, arrays by default get passed by reference. So there is no ampersand sign in the prototype or the heading, but they have been passed by reference. So when, they, when this read data function comes back, names and votes are filled with the data from the file size has the size of the number of uh, entries. Calculate total takes that size and the two arrays and let's see what it does. Takes the two arrays, takes the size, declares a variable called total, uh, declares another variable called percent equals zero to do our percentage. We go through a for loop where we first find the total. Remember, in order to calculate the percentage, we must have the total number of votes. So we go through our for loop and calculate the total. Notice total plus equals votes of i. So if we add all the votes together and cumulatively, notice my plus equals compound operator. 
It adds it cumulatively, puts it in total. When the for loop is done, total will have the total number of votes. Then we go through the for loop again, this time calculating the percentage. We take each number of votes divided by total and times 100 will give us the percentage. And then we static cast into a double because votes is an integer array. So once we are done, if we don't static cast it into a double, we will lose our decimals. And it won't be quite precise. So then I set my manipulators, fixed, show points, set precision to get the percentage to two decimal places. And then I start outputting. And as I output, I have other manipulators where I set width. I left justified and I output the names, votes, and the percentage. And once it's done with the function, once it's done doing everything, it goes back here to main. And in main, after that, our program ends, returns zero, and that's all we're doing. So let's build it and run it. And when it asks you for the file name, if you have it right there in the projects folder, you can simply type in the name of the file followed by the extension. If you don't have it in that folder, then you must make sure you put the path in. And notice my data, I get the name, I get the number of votes, and I get the percentage. And it's all aligned. That's what your manipulators do for you. So to recap, we have three functions. And the main things that we are looking in here are pass a file stream variable by reference. And notice that arrays get passed by reference automatically. They don't have an ampersand sign in front of it. But the file stream variable must have an ampersand sign in front of it. And it also shows you how to read uh, from a file. The open file function uses the char array to read a file name, how to open from a file, and uh, how to check to make sure the file is open. Then when the file opens, you read the data into the arrays and keep track of the parallel arrays. So all you're doing is making sure when you're reading the data that you read both data into the same subscript. So size is zero, names gets read, size is zero, votes gets read, then you increment size. Then we do names of one, votes of one. They have to be parallel. That is how we work with parallel arrays. So try it and let me know if you have any questions.